This is 3.4 connective tissue notes. The essential question is, what are the unique characteristics of connective tissue and what structures are found in them? Connective tissue is the most widely distributed and most common tissue in the body. It is found everywhere and they are most different from each other. When you look at epithelial tissue, they look very much like each other, but connective tissue, they're different. Because they look so different in appearance, they also have various functions. One of those functions is binding, which means that they hold other tissues and organs together. And that's where they get the name connective tissue. Another function is protection. So such tissue as bone and adipose tissue, their job is to protect the body or organ. Insulation is another function, and that's the primary job of the adipose tissue. Insulation means that it keeps your body warm. Storage is another function of uh, connective tissue. When you think of adipose tissue, fat, they store fat droplets, which help, uh, which is basically stored energy. And also, bone has that function because they store calcium and ph phosphorus, which are uh, essential minerals. Then you have transportation, and the main tissue that performs that function is blood. Characteristics that are unique to connective tissues is that unlike epithelial tissue, which has no extracellular matrix, connective tissue has a very large amount of extracellular matrix. And depending on what type of connective tissue you're looking at, they can vary. They're also well vascularized, which means they have good blood supply. Exception to that is tendon and ligament, which has poor blood supply, and cartilage, which has no blood supply, that's why it's called avascular. There are various cells inside the connective tissue, and depending on the connective tissues, the name of that cell is going to change. Other cells that might be found inside the connective tissue is fibroblast, and their job is to make fiber. Macrophage is a type of a white blood cell, and macro meaning it's the largest out of the white blood cells, but there can be other blood, uh, white blood cells. Another type of cell that can be seen in connective tissue is mast cell, and their job is to produce histamine during inflammation or in an allergic response. One of the non-cellular components of connective tissue is the ground substance. You could think of ground substance like the cytoplasm in a cell. It is all the background material where everything else is kind of sits in. So when you look at the picture on the right, all of that pink area in the back, that's the ground substance. Their job is to support the cell and kind of hold all of the material in place. Another non-cellular component of connective tissue is fiber, which is our basically string, thin strings. They could be thick or thin, and what they do is they kind of give strength to the connective tissue. The ground substance and the fiber make up the extracellular matrix, which are the non-cellular portion of connective tissue. Some of the structures that you might run into in connective tissues are pictured in this diagram. So one of those things are ground substance, which are all of this cream, pinkish color, the peach color material all in the background. Those are your ground substance. All of these string-like structures all of these bands running through, those are your fibers. And notice there are in different thickness. This one is much thinner, this one is a medium size, and this one is much thicker. So there are different types of fibers, but all of those stringy stuff are fiber. Together, the fiber and the ground substance make up the extracellular matrix, which is the non-cellular portion of the connective tissue. Some of the cells that you might run into are fibroblast. Their job is to make the fiber that you see. You might also see a macrophage, which is a blood vessel. You can picture it here, right here. And depending on this tissue, you might see adipocytes, which are fat cells. What's missing in this picture, you could also run into something called a mast cell again, okay, but it's not in this picture. And then you can also have blood vessel depending on which type of tissue you're looking at. The three types of fibers that you will run into is the first one is the collagen, which is the thickest out of the three. And it is tough and it is flexible, but it resists stretching. 
So it is for strength. So you're going to find college, a lot of collagen fibers in bone, uh, ligaments, and tendons. On the bottom right corner, you see a picture of a tendon of the shoulder. And you notice all of these black lines that you run see running through this tissue. Those are all collagen fibers. And then this torquoise looking structure are the nuclei of the fibroblasts, which are making those collagen. A much thinner type of fiber is the elastic fiber. They com are composed of protein called elastin. And just like its name, elastic fibers are very stretchy. And they branch, whereas collagen fibers, they run parallel. And because they branch and they're very uh, much thinner, they are allowed to, they're more flexible and they allow for a lot of stretching. So if you look at the earlobe, earlobe ha is cartilage, which contain a lot of elastic fibers. Areas where you're going to find elastic fibers are you're going to see elastic fibers in skin, your blood vessels, and the, the vocal cords in your lungs. Here is a picture showing you the difference between collagen fibers. So notice that the collagen fiber on the right is much, much thicker than the elastic fibers, which are much thinner, and they branch. The last type of fiber is called reticular fibers. It is the weakest out of the three and more branched than the elastic fibers, and they form a, almost like a spider web looking network and what their job is to kind of hold other cells and tissues together. So in this picture all of this material in the gray and the black are your reticular fibers and notice how they're all webbed and they're all holding these cells together and holding them in place. Okay, so these are all your reticular fibers. And the only type of tissue you're going to find reticular fibers are reticular, reticular connective tissue. 3.4 notes homework. Number one, how are the three types of fibers different? Two, why are the functions of connective tissue so varied? Number three, how do characteristics of connective tissue differ from those of epithelial tissue?